Now I know what you're thinking, slow down. Wheels, Nissan Leaf, Motec Performance, no, it's not happening. Although I'm sure Mike will probably whack some springs and spaces and some other bits on this, but this car is okay, in my opinion, for what it is. It's an affordable EV family, I don't know if we can call it a hatchback, but either way, I digress. Let's firstly touch on space. I've managed to fit three wheels in the boot. 18 inch wheels by 11 so they're not tiny we've got one just here wedged at the back and that also would allow decent space for a passenger do you understand do you understand what i'm saying to you so already i've had this car for just over 24 hours it's already doing well in the space department so now it might not be everyone's cup of tea and for some people they might say it even looks like a grandma's car but it's come a long way because i'm not gonna lie the first one definitely looked like i don't know tom should be delivering the milk on the weekend with it but this it looks half decent it also has quite some heritage or it's got some nice history about it the nissan leaf was the first mass-produced ev that's nuts that this was one of the first things that actually kicked off and pioneered the whole electric vehicle thing so enough about the past let's talk about the now and it's currently sitting on 17 inch alloys and for me i'm gonna say it's bang on if you're buying an ev especially one that's just going to be like a commuter or day-to-day -day jobs or maybe some motorway miles you don't need a 19 or 20 inch pretty wheel you need something that's going to have loads of sidewall and that's going to give you loads of comfort walking around to the rear and I'm not sure whether the rear is more prettier than the front, but that is quite beefy. And I still class this thing as a hatchback. I think it is pushing on the old CHR and Nissan Duke size, but it's a lot lower and it looks quite sporty. This, look at this diffuser. Nissan, what are you trying to do? Look at this diffuser. It's actually quite decent. It's come a long way. Like I said, the first one, it, I'm not going to lie, Nissan, if you are watching, it looked horrible. Damn! this is much better i think where it is a black roof as well breaking up the silver the gray rather you can see it comes into here into the boot yeah it looks a bit sporty not gonna lie going round to the rear you can see i was in the driver's seat and that is my driving position loads of leg room and loads of headroom this is definitely a good choice however the middle seat something i've just picked up here even though you've got heated seats on the rear You've got the transmission tunnel, which isn't, I don't know, it's not really gonna help that person in the middle because they have got a seatbelt me and they expect someone to sit there. If you are sitting there, you're gonna have to be five years and younger, sorry. Nonetheless, we've got a nice flat bottom steering wheel here. It was quite confusing to begin with because this blue button here is the adaptive cruise control and then that is the speed limiter. And I was pressing that when I was doing 65 and the speed wasn't holding. So yeah, press that button, adaptive cruise control. You also got that button there that allows you to set the distance from the car in front. If we just step in quickly here, you can see, let me just turn on the car. You can see we've got an eco button here, which I, why are you beeping? Why are you beeping? The door's open. I know. I'm not, it's because I have legs. It's because if I close it, Jesus, let me just, you happy now? So, now I'm confined in this car. You can see just over here, we've got heated steering wheel. We've also got a button that allows you to change the time when it's gonna stop charging the car. You've got that button there, which I'm gonna press now anyway, because that allows you to pop open the front of the car where you're gonna charge it. And then also down here, you've got steering assist, which you can turn on and off, obviously with cruise control. And you've got this, which is your eco button, which allows you to go from normal to eco, meaning it's gonna probably reduce some of the power coming from the air con and make the steering wheel a bit more heavier by turning off some functions. But overall, it's a nice place to be. You haven't got a physical screen here for the climate control, which is a shame because when you do, I don't know, play around with it, all you get is some information on the top here and nothing really filling up the screen, giving you all the information. However, it does have wired Apple CarPlay and you've got buttons which are very old school and I was a bit surprised by this to be brutally honest with you. That is your heated seats. You've got low and you click it up to go high. I, I don't know, I feel like technology has come quite some way since then, but I don't know, with the price point off this car and making it affordable, maybe this is the sort of thing that they had to kind of, I don't know, not cheap out on, because that's the wrong word. Maybe just choose a different style, but yeah, that doesn't, I don't know, yeah, that doesn't really sit right with me. But further buttons that we have, we have this button, which allows you to 
press this and you can see it starts setting up this automatic parking which again on any car i will never use simply because i just don't trust it when it comes to curbing alloys but more importantly just down here we have the knob look at the fingers you like these fingers in it you naughty guys so these if you put your foot on the brake and you go to the right and down you put the car in drive and if you want to go into reverse you have to again put it to the right and all the way to the top which is now in reverse and you get these little dongs it's like gum 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 and then back down you're back into drive it is a bit tricky to get used to but i quite like it and then pressing it there pulling up your electric handbrake and the car's in park and the engine's off so now as mentioned pressing that button unlocks this and as you can see we've got two charging options we have this one which is your normal type 2 charger but it's very slow i think it does like seven kilowatts you don't want to use that just close that up this is what you want to use this is called the chademo so it's not african based i don't know why i did the accent but this is called the chademo what you can do with this is plug in and i think you can get up to 50 kilowatts which is okay to charge you're not going to be able to do your normal 20 to 80 percent in 30 minutes but this is the one you're going to have to use it is known as the tesla charger and to be honest with you and i'm not just saying it because this is what i have in front of me i see more of these available than i do of the type 2 normally this is the slow then you've got another bit at the bottom which is a type to CCS I believe it's a bit faster but this is always available so this probably could come into handy but yeah what we're going I didn't close that there we go I didn't now I did so <laughs> what we're going to be doing with this is obviously we've talked about the interior I actually have I think around 25 to 30 miles left off range so I need to charge this and what I'm going to try and do is see how well it actually does on the miles because my biggest thing is i'm not going to talk about infrastructure because that's been washed out so many times but we're going to probably factor into our journey a charging stop and i'm also going to factor in whether the miles that i actually do to have to get to my destination with the car sitting on the motorway and some i don't know neighborhood miles if we want to call it call it that whether that's actually going to be replicating what's on the screen. So if I've got a 70 mile journey, will we actually be using 70 miles or is it going to be taking 100 miles out of the tank or the, the battery? I've got to stop saying tank, it's an EV. Okay, so as you can see, we have made it to an InstaVault. We just about did. And to be honest with you, 5%, 13 miles left, I'm gonna be very honest, I do not have range anxiety at all. If you are suffering from range anxiety, it's not like a phone number to ring or anything, just don't put yourself in a position where you're gonna be stranded. Looking at my Apple Maps and CarPlay Maps that isn't on the screen now, even if this was full, I could either wait 20 minutes because I'm not in a rush because I've already factored the time into my journey, or there is another one five miles down the motorway so either way there is no issues i'm going to leave this to charge for about 30 minutes do some emails do some messages and i will catch up with you guys in a bit oh it picks up cheese and bread so I've lived with this car for quite a while and something I've got to say is that yes just like those guys that go out at night time you naughty guys it picks up it definitely picks up it picks up better than an uber driver it's got 230 <laughs> I should have said that as if it's savage uber drivers I'm not saying that you're out there doing that at night time but you get what I'm trying to say it's got 231 brake horsepower and 340 newton meters of torque now that's quite punchy for what's classed as just a family EV. I was classed as a hatchback, but that boot, I cannot go over it. The boot size is immense. That's really, really good. It's the size, I, I have a pram to put in the car, shopping, laptop bags, you name it. I always have quite a full boot. This has made light work of anything I've thrown at it, so boot size definitely gets a tick from me. But yeah, on Nissan's website, it claims that this car should have dynamic handling due to its low gravity. So the battery is apparently just down here. So it means that it should, I don't know, lower the center of gravity, meaning the car should feel slightly more sporty, but... Oh. So, 
<laughs> we've got two modes, which is rather unfortunate because I'd love to see this thing in sports mode. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is quite fun. Not funny, but I have had some laughs. Down here, you've got an eco button, which makes the car feel a bit like, I don't know, granny. Okay, it makes it feel granny in a good way, obviously, because it's giving you less power when you put on your sets, press on the accelerator. But now when you've got it in normal mode, it's instant. Let's just see the body roll through here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not lying. This car has got an element of dynamicness. I'm not just saying this just for banter because I don't know, I'm like trying to be Chris Harris. It it doesn't feel washy or boaty. If anything, I feel like the seats are letting it down. Where this car is aimed at being the comfortable family EV, the seats are not very hugging and I can just slide to the left, slide to the right. You know that song that they, that they crisscross. It's not the best seats for a sporty car. So maybe they've kind of caught themselves out here. They've made a car that's really comfortable, even though there's no adaptive suspension, but with the active trace control, which is their fancy traction control system. This is quite a laugh. Look, roll it in, get on the power. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay, you're making all these, these guys jealous. I'm talking about the leaves on the trees, by the way, back there. <laughs> wow. Let's see how quick it can do zero to 30. Let's go. Come on. Oh, is there a lot of lag here? And then it picks up. Oof. Okay. And there we have it. The Nissan Leaf zero to 30 in 3.34 seconds. I told you it's nippy. So, as mentioned, <laughs> this thing is actually surprising me. And if we're gonna do an overall summary, looks-wise, sure it might not be everyone's cup of tea, but if you look at the old one, as I mentioned previously, and look at this, you'll see it's come quite a long way. And I will honestly say it's an improvement. I don't mind it too much. The 17 inch wheels provide comfort. It's gonna be cheaper to get tires as well. Don't forget that. But overall, it's a very good EV. My opinion, motorway journeys, no EV is gonna be perfect. And this is a problem that we're always gonna have. Speed and, and obviously a combustion engine is gonna be better at motorway miles, but this does what it says on a tin space wise it just can't be beaten i cannot bang on about the space enough there's so much space in this car the only thing i think that lets it down aside from the fact that it's got every option you could imagine 360 degree cameras heated steering wheel is the heated seat switch let's not even call it a button simply because everything else apart from the climate control i think we need a screen i honestly think we need a little screen it's literally a light switch and that just doesn't make sense but other than that like i said space the suspension the acceleration i want to say another word of ion but i don't have any the enjoyment <laughs> i sound like i'm talking german but it's good this is a very good ev and the only thing i would want to add to a car like this probably would be a pan roof pan roof just to give a bit more light in here and it's a keeper it's a definite keeper oh and maybe better tires because they do grip like i said the car does does feel very dynamic as they said so well done nissan you'll definitely have come true to your words but yeah the tires eh, it's coming from a guy that's got a 500 brake horsepower car the tires could definitely do with I don't know, a little upgrade, but jokes aside, this is decent. It's lovely. So yes, guys, that has been the video on Nissan Leaf. Quite frankly, I am honestly surprised. A car that really started off the whole EV thing, 
and for it to still be doing well to this day to this day it's definitely a thumbs up for me but yeah guys as always if you have enjoyed this video please smash the thumbs up button subscribe if you're new to the channel and i will see you guys in the next one take care